Hi everyone, it's Rachel and Anthony Hello. from Don't Crop Me Now. Today we are going to do a plot tour with a little bit of a difference. We're going to show you our weekly weeding tasks on our 250 square metre no dig allotment plot, plot number four. In order to complete this, we tend to use a bucket of some sort and some sort of hoe. This is actually a little onion hoe, which we can use to get in between the rows. If you need something where you're standing up a little bit more straight, then a, a, a tall hoe is absolutely fine. And sometimes we use that as well. We tend to do a mixture of hoeing to, to remove weeds and hand pulling. So if you have a look at some of the beds, these smaller beds in this section, we've actually done these already. And you can see in this bucket what we've pulled out. And if I just remove these coriander plants that are a little bit behind and are finished off, that's what we pulled out of one, two, three, four, five beds. So four smaller beds and one larger bed. So we're only removing a few weeds at a time. If we have a look in the carrot bed behind, this bed has got a few more weeds than most of the others. And that's because this bed has been turned over a little bit. I wouldn't say dug, but there were quite a few um, perennial weeds that had come up in this section. So I did have to get those out. So you can see there's quite a few weeds in between these carrot plants. I'm not gonna do that this week. I'm probably gonna do the, deal with this bed next week. The beds that have the cover on, we don't tend to do on a weekly basis, just to make our weekly tasks quick and easy and efficient. So they're still quite small here, it'll be absolutely fine next week. We'll deal with this one probably next Saturday. So if we come over to this onion bed, I would say this is the typical amount of weeds that we may get coming up in a week on our no dig beds. So as you can see, it's the odd small annual weed that has sprouted. Ideally what I would do is hand pull these like this. Sometimes it's a little difficult to reach them so I, then that's when I'd use a hoe. I try not to hoe all over the entire bed because the less disturbing you do, the less weeds you'll have come up next week. And to be honest, if there's no weeds there, wh why are you hoeing it, is my opinion. So, you can see there, it's a little bit tricky with this one. So Anthony's just gonna get that and pull it in the bucket. Because these onions, these large onions, are still so green and looking so brilliant. I don't really wanna knock a load of those out. So a longer hoe would be easier here this is what I tend to do. I'll go around the other side in a second. If you look at these shallots, I didn't actually weed these shallots at all last week. So we have got a few weeds you can see that are coming up. So these are good ones to pull out. Try and pull them out by the root, just because if you've got any wet weather like we've got at the moment, the ones that actually have a root on it, so they're past just having the two seed leaves, they will re-root back in the ground if you get some nice damp weather. So it is better to pull. You can see here, we've got a small dandelion. Because this is an no-dig bed, I'm hoping that, that will come out with its root intact. So that was good. Let's try this one. So we've got very few perennial weeds on our plots here, certainly plot four, the main plot. But obviously, weed seeds do blow in from surrounding plots and surrounding areas. So you will still get the odd dandelion, etc. coming up. I'll just go around the other side and grab a few of these. We're actually really pleased with how these onions are doing. So these ones here, are mainly giant onions. I think these ones are called, whoops, just accidentally picked some shallots. 
We've got a helicopter going over above. I'm sure you can hear that. So where we are here is about, you know, it's the suburbs of Manchester, so we're not in the centre of Manchester, but we're quite close to a very big shopping centre here. So sometimes there's quite a lot going on. And you can see these shallots. This one here is just finishing off. They will start to die back during July and then we can harvest these. So again, really, really pleased with these. These are from our safe sets. What are we going to do with the three accidental picked ones? I'm going to leave them there for now and then I'll just take them home. We'll okay. put them in whatever we're going to have to. There's a larger weed here that's hiding in between. There we go. So I'll just get some of these. <laughs> it is quite tricky actually because the onions are so good. So I'll pick as many of these out rather than leaving them that I can. If you leave any small ones, all that's going to happen is they'll just be slightly bigger next week. But if you keep on top of it, it's a pretty quick job. And that. A lot of these at this size, when you hoe them off, they, they probably wouldn't reroot. And then you can just leave them on the top and they'll just rot down. Obviously, it looks tidy if you pull them out. That's what you're looking for, I guess. Feed into there. So this actual hoe is an onion hoe, which has been very useful here, but it's good to go around anything, really. So if we look at the bed now, there's a few right in the middle, which, if we can just get that one there, and that one. So, oh, I've missed a couple around there now. I'm being really anal about this. Just check that one. And there we go. And Every time you look down, you'll see another. But that looks pretty good, so we'll be happy with that for this week. Obviously, crops like your onions have got gaps between them, so you will get weeds in these. But some of your other crops that are larger and cover a much larger area, you won't get any weeds in between. So if you look in the next bed, you'll see an example of that. So here we have got some broad beans and next to it, potatoes in the 30 litre tubs. And as you can see here, this is growing so densely that there's a few weeds around the edge. I'll get them. But in the main, there's not gonna be that much in here. There's a dandelion there, so I'll try and at least break that off. Yeah, this one's called Spurge, this one. Can you see that? This is a common one to come up. That and Fat Hen, actually, on our plot. So we're not going to do much here. That's it. Can't get in anywhere else. So at this time of year, your beds in the main are so full, it's pretty good, you don't need to do much weeding. Here again, we have got a net of structure. So this has got Brussels under it and some kale, and there's just a few bean plants. So this has not been uncovered for about three weeks. If Anthony has a look at them this side, you can see there's hardly anything in there, but there are a couple of weeds on the edge. So again, I'll leave them and we'll uncover them next week. So that's nothing to do on that one. Let's have a look at this bean bed next to it. These aren't weeds, they're actually some little radishes that I put in just in that space. But in the main, it's not too bad. In fact, I'm going to let Anthony just show you around the two bean beds. I'm just going to grab the long hoe because that's probably easier for this bed.
So there are lots of different shapes and types of hose that you can use for weeding. Personally, I like this one. I know Anthony doesn't. He likes the ones that have got the double bladed bit. But I find this one for myself, because I'm not very tall, a lot easier to use. So I tend to stick to this one. So remember, if you're hoeing, you're trying to cut the, the weeds off the, the top of the weeds off. So if we have a look in here, it's, there's not much, but there's one there, look. Can you see it? Yeah? Yep. It's gone now. So there's not really many weeds in here. I'll just go to the other side. One there. And if you're right, come here. Take that off. So that's, count that one, and it's done. This bed, I can't see any weeds, to yeah, be honest. This one, can't even see this the one ground, actually, so there's one there a lot. I just knock that off. And what we sometimes get is the odd annual weed popping up on these paths. Can you see this? Here. So ideally we'd have put more wood chip on these paths last year, but we didn't really have a good source. So I do tend to just knock with the hoe these um, weeds off the path as well, if I see any. Okay, let's keep moving on. So here we have got a cabbage patch and this cabbage or patch is obviously covered because of butterflies and pigeons so again this is one that we only tend to deal with once every few weeks in fact i actually haven't weeded under this since we planted these at all there's one decent weed right in the middle there i can actually see in between these two cabbages but again i'm not going to uncover it this week because uh, it's easier just to do them all in one go so there might be the odd weed if it is they'll probably be reasonably big by now it's just the odd one so again, I'll leave that. The more you can keep your weekly weeding tasks going, the, the easier things are. If you don't pull your weeds out and you let them get big and you let them start to grow root systems and they start seeding, then you plot, will start multiplying in terms of that problem. So it's always wise to get them out weekly if you can. And like I said, the reason we don't do that with the covered structures is just for a time to make it a quick process. And because we haven't got many weeds, it's not too bad to do it once every few weeks with, um, the cover structures. If we look behind Anthony, we've got another potato bed, and then we've got um, these are the climbing butternut squash, which are just about big enough to start thinking about climbing. We can't get anywhere near there, so there's no chance there's any weeds on that because it'd be completely outcrowded by the potatoes. So nothing to do on that bed. If we look just in front of Anthony, we've got here some carrots that are growing in tubs. So again, no weed in there. They're completely covered up. So Anthony's going to stay there and I'm going to go around the back to get access to the next set of beds. This section is where the design of a plot for actually changes quite a bit. So the bit that's behind Anthony has got those more standardised bed sizes. And then this bit in the middle here has got all random sizes of beds where we just use wood. A lot of these are at least 10 years old, these, so some of the beds are starting to fall apart a bit. So there's more weeds on this bit, but not too many. So here we are in the middle of, this is a asparagus bed. So the majority of the plants in this are two years old. And then just to my left here, we've got some more asparagus plants that I put in this spring. So they are much younger plants. So if you are weeding in an asparagus bed, I would minimise the amount of hoeing that you do because you don't want to damage the root systems. If you don't want to put these on your compost, you know when they're that sort of size, I often just throw them on the path, they, they will just die off in the sun, that's fine. So I do tend to where I can, hand pull out as much as I can on some of these. And sometimes I use the hoe that way around, it's like a bit of a scraper like that, which is why I like this shape of the hoe. So let's get that bit out. And that there, if I can even get in, because these, it's 
asparagus ferns are now like flopping absolutely everywhere. I'm leaving them though because the bees love these little tiny yellow flowers. It's, it's often covered with bees. I should have probably put some canes in to hold them up. This here, if Anthony can see that, this is a raspberry runner that's coming from the raspberry patch behind us. Can you see it, Anthony? No, I'll have to come around. Okay, come around then. So while Anthony's coming around, if you've got a raspberry patch, you know what, it's going to spread. You just sort of have to accept that it is going to spread. Just keep pulling these raspberry runners out as they come in your beds and you'll keep on control of it. So one benefit to having all your beds the same size is your paths are all very easy to follow. That's why we're having to take a different route to get round. So if Anthony zooms in here, we can see here that this is a raspberry runner. So I'll just get the root, pull it out as much as I can. I'm just going to drop that on the path. And there's a few more weeds there. Even a bit of that is fine. And right in the middle, a bit tricky to get to, but the one there. Just behind me, where all these asparagus ferns have uh, just been flopping, there's a few weeds, so I'll just... Actually, it's a big one we missed here. This is right under the raspberries. Just chop that down there and ignore it. Okay, so, again, would have been more sensible to tie these up, but they're over now anyway, so what will be will be. And then if Anthony has a look here, you can see where we've got a few weeds coming up on these paths. That is because we really haven't got enough wood chips down here and we need to be topping those up. So I tend to use the scraper side, scrape them out. They will just die off anyway. There's a bit of mare's tail here. We do have mare's tail on our plot, not so much on plot four. Just keep pulling mare's tail out. I think we've done a separate post on our blog about mare's tail. It's not as bad as everyone feels it sometimes is, I think. Much worse things to deal with. So that's it. So we're now on the middle section of the plot and we've got the dahlia bed. So the dahlia bed has been mulched with this hemp bedding. So it's a really thick layer, this is. It keeps the moisture in for the plants. And there's hardly any... Um, weeds the only thing that does start to come up is the raspberry runners so again there that's a raspberry runner so if i just move all this out of the way this will come back up just keep pulling it out that's what i do there we go we've got the, the runner there cover that back up so down this path there's a few little annual ones i'm just going to go down with this hoe There we go. One tiny little fat hand seed there, look. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Just grab my weed bucket. And here we have got a bed that's got some coal rabbi and some celeriac and some edging um, lavender plants in. So there's a few weeds in between these. So that's the mare's tail. Just keep pulling it. I don't compost the mare's tail on the main compost pile. These weeds, which are a mix of just sort of everything, what I tend to do is to put them in a black bag tie the top of the black bag and put the black bag inside a, dar a black Dalek. Um, that I find is a good way to exclude all light and to get just about anything to rot down over a bit of time. I'll just go and point out what a black Dalek is. It's the nickname for these black compacting things.
Now I have to attempt to not stand on the plants to get out. It's a bit of mare tail under there. Other than that, not much under. One here actually. Obviously you could remove this and check but I can see through the side but it's not really got weeds in it so I'll leave that the beetroot bed behind us which was the garlic which we harvest yesterday, harvested yesterday shouldn't really have much weeds in because we harvested all this garlic and planted um, beetroot seeds in these gaps yesterday so it shouldn't really have many weeds in they're just Bit of mare's tail there, and we've left a fork out. We better take that because we don't want that left out in the rain. So there we go, not much to do on that one. So let's keep going. Here we've got a bit of our wildlife section. We've got a pond here and this little rockery bed, which has got. Um, spring rockery plants and it's just got some of these nice cosmos through a bit of flowering in the summer um, there's a bit of mare's tail come through there so I'll just pull that out it hides well because it's very similar to the cosmos so that will do there and then check any of these on the path The thicker you can keep your layers of wood chip on your path, the, the less hassle you have, but you always get bits popping out, so just pull them out or hurry them off. Next session here, again, really not much in this. There's um, a couple here on the path, so just get them. A bit of grass there. And then we'll check this bed. So last weekend I was sewing in here. So again, you can see, because we're not disturbing it, it's not really much coming up. Tiny bit of mare's tail there. Just gonna quickly pass the camera. And a bit there. And then there's some sort of grass there, which could be a bit couch. Probably something we don't want anyway. Got it. Then the main that's okay. There's one little one there, but it's a bit tricky to get them when they're that size in the middle of something. So sometimes I leave them to say the next couple of weeks slightly bigger. You can pull them out. Let's have a look at the carrots. Carrots looking really good with this EnviroMesh netting, much better than the ones down there. Can't really see many weeds, there's one on the left there. Again, next weekend when we pull these covers off and do the weeding in there, we'll sort that one. One little one on the edge. And then we've got our last bed on plot four. Which is this one, which is the potato bed. So there's very little weeds in the actual bed. A bit there, a bit of grass that's coming up. There are a few weeds here on this edge. So if you put paving slabs down and you haven't really got a full proper base underneath, you are going to get weeds that come up. So I tend to get the hoe this scrapey way around I was talking about and just, it's not a great sound, but what you can do is try and get most of them off like that and the ones you can't get off just hand pull so it's not been done for a good few weeks this bit here obviously you could use weed killer if you wish we try not to do that but weed killer or a burning weed one those sorts of things a flame wood type thing would work fine so then grab that that's all right And there's one weed here where we've got this bed where we put a double bed and we haven't put anything to hold the sides steady. The, this one is obviously bowed out and this one hasn't. I 
and let's go just go around the other side there's a few weeds probably around the pergola tend to come up there similar to on the pass so this area at the end which is more like our social area it's got a lot of paving so you do get weeds that come up so again I tend not to worry too much about these I just get out what I can like that once every few weeks you can use a weeding knife if you want they work really well but having the odd weed in between here is the least of my worries <laughs> I just get the worst of it off each week there's a few around here that probably need manage from a pool there these will just die down the path so i usually leave them like that it is very hot and humid at the plot today it's not actually that pleasant So there's a few weeds around this path i don't tend to bother for them on a weekly basis i'll just deal with them when i think they're annoying me so that is our weeding on plot four so if Anthony just pans around and shows you the rest of plot four Anthony can probably see the time but what are we on there 26 minutes yeah and that's with a lot of talking so we tend to spend about 45 minutes weeding in a week once a week between our two full plots so this is one full plot 250 square meters and we've got two other half plots so that's probably about right isn't it in terms of the timing it's probably yeah. pretty pretty typical so take care everyone i hope you've enjoyed our tour today if you have please like comment and subscribe to our channel that really helps our channel develop so take care everyone bye bye